thank you nightly ghost for joining me and um engaging in this discussion um i know that we've both had experience playing amazon's new world mmo and it's uh, set to come out in just under a month now and uh, we've both had our hands on the game we've had time in the game and i'm curious about what your thoughts are about what you've seen so far and i know i've only played until about level 17 or so so i haven't experienced as much as you have and i want to qualify everything we're about to say is based on these initial experiences so thank you again for joining me and before we get started did you have anything you wanted to say yeah thank you so much uh for the invite this is such a good idea i'm excited uh you let me be involved and and like you i i think i will have gotten to maybe level 34 by the end of beta so neither of us were really going too hard uh, i know there's lots of 60s running around now so all of all of my impressions are based on that you know limited experience with groups limited experience with pvp it truly is a first impressions kind of thing and i know even through the beta they're constantly doing updates so if anything i say you know is maybe already patched or anything like that just uh just kind of be be cool about it <laughs> don't at me for anything <laughs> so I'm, I'm super glad we got those disclaimers out of the way because uh yeah we're definitely i'm not turbo nerding this and i definitely didn't try to get everything i could out of the game because i want there to be a few surprises when the game does launch so with all that being said uh let's get right to it we'll start with uh the first topic which is character creation so how, what did you think about the character creation process? Yeah, it's a good place to start at the beginning. Uh, I So as a, as a game person, I've never been someone who's cared over much about what my character looks like ultimately in games. So in terms of if, as we're talking about stuff, this was not like a make or break issue for me. I will say I was surprised at the lack of options that were available. It's felt like things like sliders and you know all sorts of options for how a character looks and stuff has been available in MMOs for a long time even western you know tends to lean more towards the like eastern EMOs uh, MMOs focus on it a lot more but western MMOs have kind of come along with a lot of different uh, visual options and so I don't know it just felt it felt very limited and that might be related to that it's a beta and so I was going to give them the benefit of the doubt that on launch day at the end of August there will be at least more static options to choose from even if we don't get sliders but they ha we have to be able to zoom out to look at the body view that felt like that was a mistake somewhere yeah so a couple of things I I'll admit that in the opening sequence I got I got a lot of like Morrowind vibes where like you you zoom in you're coming from behind like a character, um, and knowing that that's that's your avatar that you're somehow gonna edit and like, you know, modify to start the game. But I the limited would be the word I would I would agree with you most on. And um, like you said, you just feel like in 2021, there's you 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 think they would afford you a little bit more, um, you know, viewability and customization. I thought that uh, the hairstyles were for the most varied aspect. I thought that the face styles they chose were, there were a lot of angry looking faces. <laughs> there were yeah. a lot of like uh, strange position, you know, like somebody got caught mid mid video or something and, and they f freeze framed it. Um, I thought that the hairstyles that I, while there's a lot of variety, it's got, I, there's, a, there's some, I forget what other games do this, but it's got this like saran wrap sheen to it that mm -hmm. looks like uh it's it was whatever i guess whatever engine they use to kind of reflect things and i don't know about you my my hair doesn't reflect the you know, objects so i just find it kind of strange looking um when i go back to that word limited i i have to guess that a lot of this customization is going to come in the store and i know we're going to probably talk about that a little bit later but it really felt like kind of what Guild Wars 2 does, where although I would argue they have a lot more customization and you talked about like the sliders and being able to zoom out and a little bit of body modification. Uh, I gotta mm -hmm. argue, I gotta, I, I gotta guess, this isn't just a beta thing. This has gotta be something 
they're going to be adding like you know customization packs in the in the store at some point so um you know it's enough to it's enough to get your character on the, on the road but um and and i'll admit i'm also not somebody who's zooming in on my character because everything's gonna be covered up by armor anyway so i guess that's the most that's the more important visual customization um but you know overall i you know with the capital they had you know being a development studio from amazon you you'd think that they would could afford to uh to give us a little bit more i guess yeah absolutely i i think that's the bottom line is that even you know even accounting for the fact that they're going to add customization options in the store later on which i think is absolutely what they're going to do it's a good point um and that this is a you know closed beta and all of that counting in it really just felt very um i don't know uh very amateur ish yeah or yeah. A, a company that is so big it was like this doesn't feel like this is on the scale that it probably should be at this point and so I, it was and a little I, shocking yeah i figure if jeff bezos is going to go through the trouble to thank us after his rocket trip to space for all the spending we did you know maybe funnel that money or divert a little bit of it to uh to some ui and customization yeah he could sliders <laughs> <laughs> so so we get our character created um uh, you know they they their 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 ship gets wrecked uh you know on this island of eternum and i thought it was i thought the tutorialization process early in the game was had a lot of um it was very smooth it was very well thought out and i know that i'm somebody who complains uh sometimes about trying to find how to out how to do stuff kind of sporadically and it's not necessarily i don't want to use the word hand holding but i feel like with combat because that's the kind of the next thing we're going to talk about here um they did a really good job of kind of explaining the basics of combat and i thought the freeze framing stuff they did was kind of cool um and it really made sure that you knew you know at least on default this is what you do to dodge or here's what a heavy attack is or this is how you jump i thought it was very fluid um what did, what did you think about the combat in general and, and i know you have some negatives here that you wanted to point out and i'll just let you run with that okay yeah i i do agree that the initial tutorial phase of it i thought flowed very well it felt very tight in terms of what they were trying, what they were wanted to communicate to a new player, how they were communicating it, and the kind of rapid, very efficient way that you went through that process, I thought was fantastic. Um, and better than other games that I've known in the past. And I think the generals of the mechanics combat wise are pretty simple. They're pretty basic. Um, so so I thought that worked really well. I would say my <laughs> to get to get into like the stuff that I was really having trouble with and was frustrated with on a couple levels was that compared to other MMOs there was no there was no way to to monitor global cooldown which I can I can understand that there was maybe not room that they wanted to put that in but i also think that they could just add a global cooldown visualization to the three weapon abilities that you have at the bottom right of your screen and and that could be it you know that That's, could be that it, simple it's really interesting to see where they try to strike this balance between keeping a very kind of simple interface at least when you don't have any menus open and in combat and what they choose not, you know, what, what they've chosen not to show you. Um, mm -hmm. And I haven't heard, I don't know about you, but I haven't heard anything about modability in the future or, um, you know, future additions they're looking to make. I don't, I haven't really kept up to the patch notes that much, but um, I agree with you, um, you know, beyond literally not being able to use an ability, I don't, there's no other visual feedback that, you know, I'm, I'm auto attacking now, I can't use my my um my hot button keys so um you know i i've only tried a few of the weapons and beyond the lack of a kind of cooldown notification i will say that in terms of balance and this is just my personal opinion and kind of what i've experienced there's certain weapons that are less they're less forgiving in their animation locks and that's something that um 
while much of the rest of the game feels very fluid and i'll talk about like the vaulting system in a little bit but what how did you feel and you tried a lot more weapons than i did um what did you feel about the the animation lock and just how the balance the balance of the weapons was in general i i felt really and, and something i had mentioned on here too was that it felt like ranged weapons more specifically in pvp than anything else were extremely punished it was very difficult and we had joked that that you can sort of run a serpentine and a yeah, enemy right. player can't hit you for shit <laughs> and unfortunately that shakes both ways because if if we're in like a heavy combat a heavy pvp situation a lot of the especially for the healing stuff and the light staff a lot of it is is really depending on you to make hits with the light staff and if you can't make hits you can't you know refresh cooldowns you're you're missing um ability to apply buffs to other players it just feels very punishing in a way that more aoe geared gears uh geared <laughs> what's the word builds yeah so if you're especially the ones that are aoe melee it feels like an aoe melee build things for like the tank i think the the hatchet has one i think there were a couple more that let you some of the rapiers have it where you can your character like can spin around and do a lot of like melee heavy aoe type attacks those feel unbelievably powerful in things yeah. like massive pvp battles compared to desperately trying to make skill shots when everyone is dodging, everyone is moving, none of it's very predictable. Everyone's like abilities are driving them different directions. People are being pushed and pulled all around. You, you can't hit shit for shit from ranged. And if that's like the main thing that you've put points into as a weapon, like, you know, the muskets and uh, some of the ranged builds for the hatchet and stuff, it feels like that's going to be just totally out of the meta, at least when it comes to PvP. And that kind of sucks. I wish there was something they could do uh, to make that feel a bit more balanced, but I don't know what a simple solution would be for that. Yeah, and I don't have the answer either. And I, I know, speaking about the PvP and anecdotally, like we joked about the Serpentine, but I, I escaped my fair share of, of, of uh, combat. Um, and you know vaulting up hills and using elevation to my advantage and just doing that thing from super bad like where they're the, you know the guys are getting chased by the cops and they just stop and they're like that's the fastest kid in the world like i'm not catching them we're just gonna you know they eventually just turn around and i'll say you know you i was really heavy into the musket you know that i was killing turkeys left and right mm -hmm. and i also tried the hammer and i agree with you those melee weapons especially those two-handed melee weapons those are those are powerful they they have they have really cool abilities. They they have some um, movement impairing abilities, and I thought that um, they felt really weighty. And I know that's something you mentioned before. Like your attacks feel like they have an impact. Um, but I got to be honest. Like I I got the uh, I forget what the weapon skill is called for the rifle, but you kneel down and you have a, a three shot rapid fire. And mm -hmm. I was killing a buffalo earlier. And it like I got my three shots off, and then I felt like you know I that frustrated rifleman that's got to like restuff the balls and the and the powder back in and like chase this buffalo, and you know my my cursor's over the nameplate, and I don't feel like I'm hitting anything. So, you know, like you said, I don't know what the the large scale PVP, you know, wh where where does that fit in when everybody's getting you know pushed around and dodging, and and again when elevation comes into play. Um, and then we, you know, I know they've had some server instability issues. So what if they can't fix that? And um, so I'm, I'm curious to see um, how these combat issues you've pointed out um, work, not just in open world play, but, you know, I don't know if, did you have any experience with you, the war or the siege mechanic? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I didn't get to participate in a large scale, scale the actual war itself, but I did get into multiple like large scale PVP skirmishes around. And there was, um, I don't know, it was a lot of fun, I will say, as a healer. There, there feels like there is a healing build that you can make to, to do some really effective PVP healing. This is where, and, and I hate to kind of jump around, but if we're talking about PVP, 
this is where yeah. I had the idea that boy would it be really useful to have something like a um, a public group join mechanic in this situation because we were around one of the forts um, it was all people from my faction it was all people that were flagged and it was like you know what would make this also really useful especially if you are wanting to make a push to integrate um, I don't know I don't know if you could do I guess I don't know if you could do like the voice chat but it just felt like wow this is an opportunity to have like that join public group function yeah. or, or yeah. like join fort defense or like join fort battle and automatically everyone in this area who is of your faction and who is pvp flagged are now put together in a group and can chat in that group and you can see the um, locations of people on the map and you can see uh, the health of people on the map because for me I have to turn because of my computer bless her heart I have to turn it down where I think I have like five or six of the uh, nameplates available to be seen at the yeah. at any given time and my um, distance render is very low so I can I can kind of see like two people if they're right next to me. But when we're talking about trying to like organize for flanks and for moving around in large groups, it's like I don't know where fucking other people are and I don't know where people are going. I'm kind of, you know, puts in my ass around trying to follow little little like clusters of people. And it just felt like there was maybe a better way to organize this where it would be more enjoyable for people even on both sides. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like it kind of connects to something you've said to me already. And it's getting into the UI a little bit. But this um, combat targeting when you're a healer, right? And mm -hmm. I know this you probably had some of this experience when you were doing the expeditions. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, um, you know, I know you've already mentioned the healing um, you know, issues already. But the how, how do you target somebody that you want to direct heal versus this, this uh, ground targeted AOE heal I think you have? Yeah, so the answer is different in different scenarios, I would say. Um, the the options available currently is if you're in a five man in, in the group in one of the dungeons, um, or I guess if you're in a five man uh, out in the world, you can do the mouse scroll wheel to kind of very awkwardly and clunkily target someone um, for a direct heal, uh, which is... Ultimately, that's just something that is not going to be an option in any way in any large scale like PvP group or like a large scale raid in the future. It's it's not possible because the only other way of uh, direct targeting a player is with that central like reticle in your screen. And if you can just imagine in like a big PvP area or a big raid you're looking at the boss and then you're looking at just like an absolute cluster shit of melee players all at the bottom of the boss, moving around, dodging, getting hit by things, getting pushed and pulled. And so it is is absolutely functionally impossible to pick out a single player within that mass and be able to target them with that centralized reticle. It's just not a thing that you can do. At all, and it's also I, I don't know. It's it's very frustrating that it seems to want you to use that, or it wants you to just not use um, targeted heals. But I, I, it just seems very confused about what it wants you to do for healing, which is why I have the impression that healing kind of came in as an afterthought. Okay. I'm hopeful that some of these things will they'll get enough feedback that maybe they can they can make some fixes before launch. And, and I know I, ha I haven't tried the live staff to the extent that you have. I, I've been on the receiving end some, of uh, some heals. And in terms of balance and when those when those heals do land, I know you had complaints about the targeting. It it feels like you're, you know, you don't have to, you're not, you're, you're those heals are beefy. Like they, they you, you know, as a healer, you feel like you can top somebody off or, and, and again, you know, when you were doing the expeditions, did you feel like when those heals finally did land and you didn't have any targeting issues, you know, it wasn't like you you had to cast two, three heals to get somebody, you know, above water, or or did it seem like they're not? There's some balancing issues. It it actually it felt pretty balanced. It felt like um, the the power of your heals did increase in line with the content that you were facing, 
especially in the two dungeons that I did, the first one and the second one. The first one was at, I think, around 2025, and the second one is at around like 33, 35. And both of those, it felt like, you know, I had set and I had read the ability and what I was kind of supposed to be doing. And so I at least had a broad idea and I had made sure that my gear was correct and that my weapon was like all my gear and my weapon were correct gear scores for what I needed to be level wise. So as long as you were sort of paying attention to that and you weren't really under geared and you weren't really poorly specced, uh, it felt it felt good. It felt like it was working really well for what it was supposed to be working with. The only thing that was so frustrating with it was the direct heals. And at least when it comes to direct healing in a five man, that part of it feels like it could very, very easily be corrected by um, correcting their defensive target lock, which there is an option for a target lock in the UI. And so I can't entirely tell if that is working as intended and they just need to kind of correct it, or if it is so it's supposed to be working the way that I think a target lock, a defensive target lock should work. And it's just not functioning the way that they're intending it to function, which is where you your defensive target is a friendly and you've locked that in as your defensive target. And so you can go ahead and cast, uh, cast out to enemies and not lose that defensive target as your target. So I could, I could like defensively target and lock whoever's playing a tank. And then I could go through the whole instance and be casting and damaging and doing whatever. But anytime I want to do a direct heal, it's getting sent to that to that target lock, that defensive target lock. And so it's not remembering your defensive target? Is that what it is? Correct, yeah. So it looks like, and there is a UI option where it looks like you're locking onto them. And as long as you don't cast any offensive or any, um, oh, what's the word? Yeah. Healing abilities or, or uh, damage abilities. I'm damaging, sorry. yeah. As long as you're not casting any damaging abilities, it'll stay locked onto that defensive target. But as soon as you cast any damaging abilities, which you have to do, that's like a key portion of playing the healer. Like it wants you to be doing that. But as soon as you do that, you lose that defensive target lock. And it doesn't feel like that's the intended... Uh, the intended use of that because otherwise it's almost meaningless to have a def to have like a defensive target lock if you're going to lose it as soon as you cast any uh, offensive abilities that doesn't make any sense yeah it sounds like it needs some work and i think um if we're gonna if we're gonna transition to the next topic i think we can both agree that the range is is not as a it doesn't feel as effective um, doing ranged combat that the melee does. I think the, the melee feels very um, weighty and gratifying when you hit, especially with heavy attacks and the variety of, of skills with the, the movement impairing effects. Um, and then, you know, you've, you've obviously gone at great length to describe the issues with the healing and the targeting that sometimes um, make it difficult to be the support in a party, right? Um, so did you have anything else you wanted to add about the combat? I think I think you you very thoroughly broke apart the issues with the uh, the targeting though. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess for me that's been so frustrating. It's hard not to not to think about how irritating that is. Um, but yeah, that was mostly it. I think I think the difference is that in PvP I can understand where it doesn't it doesn't feel or it feels much more punishing in PvP than it does in PvE. I will say ranged casting in a PvE environment is pretty solid and feels very strong. Um, it's specifically the PvP element that feels that feels like it's it's just I don't know. I'm just constantly casting like into the wind in PvP. And so that eventually does start feeling really bad. You feel like you're not doing anything. And and speaking of kind of um, kind of let, being let down a little bit, uh, you have you have something in here about the the weapon scaling experience, and I, I have to agree with you because, um, you know, as you're and you've talked about this on your stream, when you're traveling through different areas, there's some zone transitions where you're going from like level six content to level eighteen content in like you know ten meters, right? 
and mm -hmm. you know you have your same weapons and you know um for those that aren't aware you know your your weapons uh, level up and they they get experience and you become more proficient with them um and i feel like if i'm not as proficient with a rifle but i kill you know if i'm a level 10 and i kill a level 15 um i should get a lot of experience or if i'm very proficient like you have here in your notes with a particular weapon type like the ice gauntlet for example there should be a static experience gain based on not on the proficiency of your weapon but on the level of the mob that you kill would you agree yes absolutely and i i was very shocked that it didn't work that way i don't know why but in my mind that seemed so obvious and i was pretty taken back when i was like okay, I've leveled up this life staff, which I focused on almost the whole time because I really wanted to get deep into the talent tree of it. And I was like, okay, we've come, we've reached a time where I'm now in like the, you know, upper, upper 20s of killing mobs. I'll pop on this gauntlet, which is a level one, and I'll kill a few of these. And I bet that that sucker's just going to pop right up on the levels and I kill one and it gets like 12 XP versus I had just killed one with my life staff and got 76. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Why? <laughs> Why does this work like this? And so now it's going to take me just as long to level up a new weapon. Like, you, you don't get any, um, I don't know, you don't get any bonus for the fact that you're just wanting to swap weapons and you want it to be caught up to you. And it, yeah, and it influences your decision to continue. It's almost like a... It's like a deterrent to continue to use mm -hmm. that lower level weapon if if it's not something you've been leveling up already because again like you said if you're doing content that's on your level and you focused on one weapon and you decide you know you want to you want to add some variety to your your build um it almost dissuades you from using that secondary weapon that's not quite as leveled up or you have to make the conscious decision to go back to those lower level areas and you're just sitting there, you know, leveling up a weapon, which is weird because I thought games have gotten away from that kind of thing. And if it's a, if a weapon experience system is something you're going to use, you know, again, we've talked about it before. Why not just have a static gain? You know, because if I sh if I'm shitty with a rifle, but I kill something that's 10 levels above me, I, maybe I'm not as shitty as that rifle thinks I am, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely it definitely dissuaded me from working on it. it. It just made it so that now something that would have added because they seem to want you. You have so few kind of weapon abilities for each weapon. They, and they've made weapon swapping very fluid within the UI that the, it seems to encourage you to use both. Right. So right. it feels bad, you know, feels bad, man. Uh, <laughs> that that it doesn't also seem to want to encourage you like it, make it easy to have to bring weapons up to where you're at to encourage you to like test that variety um have that depth of play and spec um which i think is really what's needed in a game when you really only have like these few abilities and these really small talent trees you should you should be letting players you should be really encouraging and allowing and making it as easy as possible to level up all these weapons and be able to like swap things around because to me that's like part that's going to be part of the fun is to be able to do that so i don't know why that would be discouraged in this way especially if you're a completionist if you're trying to get all those all those things maxed out um you don't you know you don't want to make that slog or maybe you do maybe that's maybe you want to prolong the gameplay experience or the gameplay session um this is kind of connected to the the mechanics um but we're i'm going to move into the graphics and the animations spell effects things like things we see visually in the game and um keeping it connected to what we were just talking about the spell effects seem kind of muted they don't they're not over the top they're not flashy there's not really a lot of bloom or, or lighting effects that i see um in fact and you can correct me if i'm wrong if you're casting a heal spell it's it's green if you're casting um, something that has, that's like movement impairing maybe it's yellow or, or maybe i've got this color coding wrong but it's they're very flat there's not a lot of visual noise i kind of prefer that um i hope that they don't you know add visual noise to cosmetics where you're kind of standing there maybe at the trading post and you know somebody's wearing a christmas tree and it's like you can see <laughs> from space yeah. um 
I, that's one of the criticisms I have from games like Guild Wars 2 is like, you know, you can customize your character quite a bit, with the, especially with the dying system. And I know that New Worlds adopted this die system as well. Um, I'm, I'm glad on one hand that there's not a lot of visual noise, but combat does seem, at least visually, with spell effects, not that visually exciting. Um, I don't, what do you think about that? I agree. I'm, I kind of take the same approach that you do where ultimately I'm okay with it not being like aggressively um, cluttered visually. And I same thing, I like the UI in that same sense that it's not uh, very like visually imposing. And, and so I don't, I don't hate it. I think they could maybe do a bit more when it comes to visual cues about things. Like there were a couple things in there where I had mentioned, like speaking of visuals, where I thought, you know, same thing with like the um, global cooldown. Like you don't have to have like a big additional thing. You could just on on the three little abilities you have already, just have it, you know, like in a like in an MMO or in WoW or something. You know, when you when you cue something that does a global cooldown that little like clock hand you know ticks right 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 all the way around it like i think that would be really simple and then like little simple things oh the one thing i really wish it would add is when you get into combat i wish there was some visual indication of that on your screen maybe like a soft red glow around uh around the, the edge of the frame to let you know that you are in combat with something and then also to let you know when you leave combat with something, I find that actually very irritating when I'm trying to do um, like harvesting or something. I'm trying to do a gathering profession, and something like you know. Oh yeah, no, there's no there's no audio me. cue or combat music. Yeah, or like something that. You're right, way you're behind right. me goes to me, and I can't see it on my screen because it's coming from behind. Yeah, yeah. So I have no visual indication until that thing uses its like hardest attack, and then stuns me. And then now I'm stuck in a stun and getting hit, and it's really, uh, I don't know, it's just fucking irritating. <laughs> and, and and you know, my my opinion on this kind of UI, I, I consider it to be kind of a UI issue, is, and this is kind of nitpicky. I almost wish this uh, that your combat bar, your your skills bar, wasn't at the bottom right. I wish it was in the center of your screen. I mm -hmm. I I actually find it kind of annoying that I have to glance to that part of my screen. And I don't, you know, I, some of this can is solved by like ergonomics and like your screen. I, I'm, I'm on a laptop and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a smaller screen, but I don't know what the choice behind the bottom right was. I know that they've got the health indicator and stuff in the center as well, but you know, I wouldn't mind if they, if they allowed us to kind of move that up and then pull the um, skills to the center. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that, that would uh, clutter up the screen too much because I, I've, I very quickly went into the options and kind of enabled their um, their what do they call it the the kind of um, situational UI elements and I, mm -hmm. I very much mm -hmm. like they did that where it kind of mutes everything if you're not using it but you're completely right there's no like cross swords that come on the screen when you turn when you get into combat I don't think that there's we're gonna get to the music here in a second I kind of have a gripe about this but there's no music change um, yeah. when you're in combat so. Um, but sticking back to the visuals, I will say this. Environmentally, this game looks gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that even if I toned it down a little bit, the design that went into um, really leaning into elevation changes, I mean, just like looking at, um, you know, these these different farm setups they have, the, the material types. Um, you know, I do see some repetition, especially in a lot of the cliff faces. Um, and especially since I've been to more than one starting area, you know, you start to see a little bit of the, the copy paste stuff, but texture wise, the game looks great. Uh, the lighting, I have a, I think I have a, a 3060 in this laptop and I've got, so I've got the ray tracing. It looks mm -hmm. great. Um, what do you, what did you think about kind of just running around and, and, and seeing the environment and the, and the mobs too, the mobs, the, the textures on the mobs look great. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I love the look of the game overall. I like, I think it's done a good job finding a comfortable middle ground between something that is supernatural and something that is grounded in, you know, something more realistic. And I think that look is pretty unique. I haven't seen that very much in MMOs and I, I like that a lot. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. 
Uh, what was I? I was, oh, I was going to say something else about kind of related to graphics and UI. And I don't. Oh, I was going to say some. There are some areas where I wish they would kind of cut the grass a bit. For me, seem, you're right. The, so frustrating the, uh, needing the to like density. shoot. Yeah. yeah, needing to having that reticle locked in the center and needing to like pan the camera, you know, pretty low to the ground. It's like, well, I can't. I'm just going to assume that that's where that turkey is. Because I can't fucking see it anymore. <laughs> no, it's it's going to be that one moment where you need to go prone and you're and you need to hide in the grass that you're going to wish that mm -hmm. they didn't cut the grass. That's what it's going to be. I know, I know. <laughs> that's my that's my only other thing is it is very fun to be able to just like scuttle around in the tall grass, but it's very annoying when I'm trying to uh, to actually like find things that are important. Oh no, I do like that they have. They do have some very nice kind of like indicators, like that little beam of blue light. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. For quest things. It's a little hit or miss, I've noticed. It it sometimes works, it sometimes doesn't, and sometimes it it shows up when you when you actually are done with the quest and don't need it to show up anymore. Sometimes it doesn't show up when it's supposed to. But I do like that idea. You know, if we're not gonna have a a like really specific indicator on the map or a mini map having that available is is really helpful yeah i uh, i'm glad you mentioned the, the the beam of light um i almost wish that and i know they make um items that drop from mobs they put them in that little satchel uh, and i almost wish that those had a higher and we, we joke about the grass mm -hmm. but i wish that they had kind of a, a maybe a four five foot tall beam of light you know that that indicated that that mob dropped something because Unless you're stopping to skin something, or you know, you're just you're paused for a second, um, you may you may run away and not know that you got an item. Um, you know, I uh, speaking about the 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 visuals of the environment. I love the we're, we're, the crafting and gathering. We'll get to in a little bit, but um, the way they've integrated nodes, like resource nodes, into the game so seamlessly, and not made them they don't make them glow which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. They don't have this like weird sparkly or sheen to them. Um, and instead of doing that, um, and I, I can't say this for the mining nodes because they really do. You you can really not see those sometimes. Um, the plants all have this, um, not I wouldn't call it over the top, but they're very unique visual effects that as opposed to like a sparkle in other games, you know, they have plants that like spit fire or they have some sort of other like... Um, you know, animation or visual noise to them that lets you know if you can't track it yet that it's there. And I, I think that that's a really cool alternative to this sparkly stuff we see in other games. I agree. I And like you, you mentioned, the, the sound of a lot of these like advanced gathering materials, I, I think that is cool as shit. I don't think I've heard that in almost any other game where like specialty mining nodes actually make like sparking noise or water noise or something and the fire blooms actually just like make little fire spit sounds and the shock bulbs the shock bulbs do that little like zapping electric electrical sound i think that's really cool too yeah that that has not gotten old i still think that's just neat as shit so they get points for that i think that's very cool and a really nice kind of additional element that you wouldn't have expected and that just makes the world feel a bit more, a bit like a richer. Uh, I do wish, speaking of kind of like the, the setup of the game, one thing that I have found extremely frustrating and kind of wish there had maybe been a bit more thought into is some of the layouts of especially the dungeons themselves and on a smaller scale in the real and in, in like the overall world is some of the like towns and the the areas with lots of mobs and stuff they've worked hard to give it a visual sense of like um depth and visual variation with you know steps up steps down different platforms lots of like um uh kind of like lived in clutter with box i i like i like the idea of putting putting lots of little elements like, you know, like boxes and Props, right? rubble and uh, having having like stairs up to places 
and different elevations of things. I think that's all pretty neat and like scaffolding and stuff. But I, th there's maybe got to be some kind of way to like block off areas like that so that you can't in a lot of these dungeons, a lot of these mobs, you really do need to be like dodging away from things really consistently. And they've just put so much environmental clutter in them that me and like other people in my group, we were constantly getting stuck behind like rubble. We were rolling into like boxes. We were stuck like behind nets and shit. And it was it was maybe a lot. So I, I like the idea of having that there visually, but maybe especially in dungeons or areas where they know that you're going to be needing to dodge or move or get like pushed around by mobs. We maybe just put like a little invisible buffer zone so you can't get stuck behind stuff all the time. No, I agree with you. That would really destroy the experience. I know, um, just to kind of piggyback on a little bit of the movement and, and mechanics of, of movement, um, you know, they have this vaulting system in game where you can kind of climb objects and climb over things. And it is very fluid animation wise. We were just talking about the visuals. Um, I think it works. I think that other games that have tried to do it before had this kind of, um, they, 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 a lot of them employed this system where you could only latch on to certain points in the environment. This game feels like they've just, you know, whatever coding they've done to get this to work in the real, in the overworld and like just hopping over fences. I will say this, do not go into the options and enable the like automatic vaulting because I spent a good three extra minutes in the tutorial area going to those different boats because when I was trying to get the flag at the front of the boat, my character kept vaulting over the front of the boat and falling off. So um, <laughs> pretty frustrating, but I got to say like animation wise, things look really fluid. We talked, we joked about doing like the worm and the flop with the going prone and stuff, but mm -hmm. um, it, the, the dodging, you know, the dodging I would say, and, and, to, to your point about the, the the amount of objects around you, that almost looks a little clunkier than it needs to be um, because, you know, you have to finish the animation roll into where mm -hmm. whatever direction you're going in. But, um, you know, I can't say enough. I think uh, overall, if I think about the visuals, I'm glad there's not a lot of visual noise with the, um, the combat and the spells. Although I do wish, like you said, that there's a little bit more UI indication as to what's going on. Um, the environment, I think, is great. The the mob variety is enough. I think there's a little bit of a kill ten wolves going on if you're <laughs> you know if you've done multiple um, starting areas. But um, so far, and again, this obviously we're talking about not the entire game here. Um, I I like what I see with my eyes, right? Yeah, see with your special eyes. Yes, my special eyes. Your <laughs> special eyes. The, no, I, I, I've got that Riddick vision. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you got yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think it's good. Oh, and I, I was going to say, too, I really do like your point about having the visual indicator for items, that little bag that the moms drop. Yes, I think yeah. they absolutely need to ratchet up the visual indicators for those and then a visual indicator for the little supply caches. Those, those are things that unless you are like right ass on top of them, it is not visually apparent that they're there. You know what I and think I that is? On that irritating. I, you uh -huh. know what I think that is? On in the smaller ones, what they've done, mm -hmm. I think, is they've taken this sparkle effect. And I'm only guessing here, but this is what it seems like. For the tiny ones, the sparkle effect is it's like locked to the center of the model. And so you're able to see the small ones. But if you go up to a chest, and I noticed you were doing this in the in the expeditions, when you go to the chests, I think the that sparkle animation is still in that object. It's just hidden by the model. And so when mm -hmm. you're going around to the farms, I, what I've what I've run into is like the smaller ones that look like they're just in like a little basket. Like you can see the visual noise from that. But if you're going to anything larger than that, one of the props that they use for the other chests, it's not glowing like that is. And I think it's because that animation or that effect is hidden by the size of the object. And I'm guessing there, but that's what it seemed like in my experience. Yeah, possibly. I know it's it's very it's just very distinctive between the quest indicator light and how far away I can see that and how very clear it is um, and the way it stands out, which is so useful, especially for smaller items. Uh, you know, if you're if you happen to be at night or at tall grass, I mean, you just would never be able to see shit like that unless you were standing right on top of it. So I think. It'd be great if they like just corrected 
where everything that you need that's relevant like that, um, it has that same kind of big pillar that you can see from a pretty significant distance. Right. Yeah. Because otherwise I'm constantly going into like all the houses, constantly re-killing lots of mobs because I need to check and see. Yep. You know, you need it for a lot of quests and stuff. That was me. Like, that was me. Yeah. Going into yeah, the same just house all the time. time. And it's like, oh, I've God, been here yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, my God, this is not enjoyable anymore. Yes. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, noise, visual noise. Let's talk about what we hear. And I know right off the back, I want to talk about the music. Um, I have not heard enough of the music to know whether I like it or not because there seems to be this bug that doesn't seem to be fixed yet that you the, the music doesn't loop and mm -hmm. I don't because of that and that because that's so noticeable I don't know about you and I and maybe it's different if you're in an expedition maybe they have some unique music that they use there but I don't really have an opinion on the music and i i've you know played games like the elder scroll series and guild wars jeremy soul does really great work you know final fantasy always has great music i would argue wow has some pretty good set pieces there mm -hmm. um but i man I, I don't really have an opinion on the music because i just haven't heard enough of it yeah i love the the music that you get at the opening screen so like if you start the game up before you get into character creation or uh, server selection it has one song that it loops over and over but that one song is just delightful it's kind of got a bit of a pirates of the caribbean vibe to it uh it's very kind of subdued it's a real nice background banger like i just i really enjoy it i think it sounds great De definitely the, the word i would use the word banger too it's it's pretty bumping yeah you're right i, I it, agree with you it's, it's good it's, it's, yeah <laughs> But the problem is, is that is maybe like the only thing that they came up with sound wise. And I guess I'm I was spoiled because my first big MMO was wow. And I just remember, wow, especially like Orgrimmar or how distinct like they had come up with soundscapes for every city that made you feel like you were in a new place than the place you had been. Yeah, there. I it doesn't have that iconic, memorable effect that. Um, and I, you know, I have a lot of experience playing a game like Guild Wars, and and they tap into Jeremy Soul's kind of tried and true, um, sound. So use your word soundscapes, and um, you know, I can still to this like if I hear that like pre-searing Ascalon like Guild Wars music or their their like intro screen music, like it takes me back. And I, and I've been doing this let's play, um, and it's been you know, the sitting here and listening to the music is um, a treat. And I know, you know, you mentioned here in your notes that be, barring the music not looping, it still doesn't seem like there's a lot of variety going from one uh, landscape to another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just feels like a missed opportunity. Like they had the one song. I like the one song. I like the feel of it. I like the vibe of it. And so I found it frustrating that both that there was the the actual like glitch, it seems that it won't continue to loop in game. I know a couple streams I've been sitting there and be like, why is it so fucking quiet? And then I realized yeah, that yeah. The, the game sound, the music in the background sound had just like stopped yeah. looping <laughs> like an hour ago. And we've just been sitting here in, like dead ass silence, raw dog in reality. And so it was like, this is not... <laughs> This is not what we're about here. <laughs> maybe that's where maybe to get up maybe to get the rocket done in time. That's where that's where Jeff had to cut the money. There's no, you know, maybe, there's no capital yeah. for music. Yeah. Music get cut get, like, get gets cut first. So, um, either you just add a booster, or yeah. we get a full <laughs> soundtrack to this game. And it's like, <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a, no. That's a good point. It's gonna be a store option. It's gonna be a store option. Buy buy no, the rest of the original. No. Buy the buy the rest of the original soundtrack for twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh god i really hope they don't do this absolute nonsense with like dlc you know what they will do though and I'll, I, I i please don't i'm nine out of ten on this that they're gonna do this you're gonna get like uh soundscapes for your home i bet i bet they sound mm. they sell soundscapes for your home yeah um that makes so sense. i can see that it, Obviously, music isn't the only thing, and we talked about the environment and how um, they did so well there. The environmental ambience is 
I think, um, a really positive aspect of the game that I've experienced so far. And, you know, not just the little things like the the bustling noises of the town and, and the crafting noises and stuff, but um, even something as simple as the the echo that comes off of somebody hitting a tree or um, hitting an ore node, the the directional noise, um, the sound design they did there is something I don't think I've experienced in another game. And the, the reason I think it's cool is because I remember watching a stream of New World maybe a year ago and it was just cool to see the care like the person noticed it as well like they just went towards the sound and discovered like oh this is where the this is where the ore nodes are at because i heard somebody mining over here using the stereo sound you know effect it, it was just really cool and i think it adds you know i'm gonna get to this colonizer piece in a little bit but that's, that's for like the end of the video but this idea that like okay they're out here get, getting resources the resources are going to be used to fund or fuel the the, the fighting and the combat um, I, I really like the ambient noises. Um, I don't hear a lot of birds. That's the only thing I don't hear. I don't get, maybe I just came up, that just came in my head. I don't hear a lot of bird noises. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I've gotten some bird noises. I don't know where I've been at, but I've gotten some bird noises. Okay, good to know. On. Good to know. Cause the turkeys, you know, I hear the turkeys all the time right before I kill them. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know. I, I overall, I think um, the the sound, the music design needs work. Um, it needs to be fleshed out again for a game where you feel like they like money really isn't the issue. Um, mm -hmm. And the and the ambience yeah. uh, sounds that are, are pretty good. Now we did have a little piece here about the voice acting, and I gotta agree with you here. I'm not really, I'm not wowed by it. I'm nothing's really blowing me away. I've done a little bit of the main story where there seem to be some like iconic um, NPCs. Um, nothing's really blown me out of the water. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't, I haven't really kept up with like the, the voice acting cast that they've hired here. So I, maybe there's somebody in there later on that is just going to do an amazing, you know, um, cut scene piece. Uh, do, have you seen cut mm -hmm. scenes in the expeditions or is there voice acting in that or no? No, there's not. Oh, wow, there's wow, very wow, wow. little. I mean, it's very, very limited. I think the voice acting that's in there is good uh there was there was a couple i think the end of the first expedition the boss says a couple things but it's just like two lines maybe and then i know one of the quest givers on the main quest will kind of say the first you know sentence of the quest text and then that just stops yeah like it just yeah. it feels like the voice acting that's there is good i am surprised at how little things are voice acted you know like talking to people in the town talking to like barkers about stuff everyone's got like maybe one or two little throwaway lines that don't really add to you know don't tell you anything about the lore don't really add much you know it's just like little things i don't i don't know it just feels like that's also something that needs to be filled in it feels like that's very sparse for a game of this level i'm i'm just surprised about yeah i i gotta agree with you like the 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 voice interactions with npcs is very limited and the things they have to say are very kind of generic and kind of need to know only um they do have some of them i will admit do have that kind of second option where you can kind of explore a little bit more about what's going on or what, what why am i doing this um i will say this i think that and this is a guess maybe a design decision was to limit the amount of exposition in the voice acting and lean more towards this sense of exploration and discovery because i and i we didn't mention this in the the visual part but we're going to get to this quest part in a little bit um these notes and these objects they have scattered around the world that kind of have that blue glow to them and I feel like a lot of the exposition that is not going to come from voice acting but instead kind of more old school use your eyes read um, and I enjoy that. I like that they've incorporated it into their achievement system. We're going to get to the UI section here in a second, but um, I I like that. I like that choice. Um, I don't want to watch a movie. Now, I, I am disappointed to hear you say that in the expedition, it didn't seem like they had a set piece for the, you know, even like after killing the boss, like or some moment um, where they have some, some voice acting, because I think that that's a... That's a 
that's a it would be a good choice in those moments to really lean into that um but again it's a closed beta i haven't played the entire game maybe that kind of stuff is is end game and 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 maybe when because when the story ramps up i'm not sure but um i'm disappointed a little bit in that and to hear that but i do i am glad that they've chosen to kind of ex include a lot of extra reading material so to speak around the world Oh, I actually have the opposite opinion. Oh, please tell that. me. Argue, argue, it, I, argue I, it. I do. I do. Well, I think I think my approach is that I I like voice acting and I like getting I like getting exposition kind of from the characters themselves, especially in a game where they're they're pretty they're moving around really well. There's uh, a lot of opportunity for some kind of like facial expressions. I think one of the main the early quest giver uh, early on for the main quest line is really cool and has a cool voice and a cool kind of like vibe to him and I wish he would tell me more stories and he doesn't and then and I think that would be cool I I found it to be maybe a bit unbalanced in terms of what we could have learned through either like voice acting specifically related to like main quest lines like it does it a little bit and we we almost almost have it where you can understand kind of what's going on but it just doesn't feel like it's quite filled out and and versus the uh the little notes that you get everywhere i like that there are notes hidden everywhere i found it a bit frustrating because it was like sometimes you got things in orders that didn't make sense and some of them yeah, i thought yeah, were way 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 too long and so it made it for me it felt impenetrable on some of those the length that it was and not being able to really control the order that you were picking them up in it You're just right. felt like everything was really scattered in terms of how to take in information it wasn't like reading a nice laid out narrative that could like build tension and reveal information at certain points you were just kind of getting these like these like random tidbits of things sometimes in random orders and sometimes it went on for like multiple, multiple pages. It's an interesting point you make, and I got to agree with you on that last point about it being random. I'd almost like it if, if you're going to have somebody do a scavenger hunt like that, um, maybe make it to where you can only interact with them in order, right? Because mm -hmm. you know those things you're going to put, those all of that stuff's going to be put into a guide or something where somebody can be able to walk around and get all of them in, in, in one go or whatever. Um, you know, I... I, I can I can I can agree with that a little bit. Um, you know the length, and I think I, I would argue that that's those that's for people that really are taking it slow and do mm -hmm. want to take the time to understand the stuff. And to be quite honest with you, even though I like that as an idea, I didn't for the sake of the closed beta read everything. And I think when it when the game launches, I'll I'll take more time to kind of truly understand like okay, what is this in the context of the game. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the UI section. We're gonna skip down. I'm gonna come back to it, but come back down to the the quest and the story and lore because that's I guess I think it's kind of what we're talking about here. Um, the the quest design is, and I didn't think about this until we started talking about it. It's pretty limited. Talk talk to somebody, get a quest, go somewhere, kill some things, gather some things, but that's it. There's no escort missions um, that I see. Um, and I don't see, I mean, and then also there's uh, there's the, the crafting, um, you know, missions you can get or the gathering ones, but there's not a very huge variety in the side quests. Um, and I haven't seen anything in the, in the main quest so far that is particularly um, interesting in terms of quest design. Yeah, I had, so I had heard, and I don't have a primary source for this, but so this is anecdotal, uh, <laughs> but... I had heard that early on in the betas, one of the main complaints was that it didn't feel like people knew where they were going with things. Like it didn't feel like there was a, a background or a story. And someone had said that for a long time in the actual development of the game, the the narrative and the story and the lore of it was on the back burner. And a lot of what was going on was like, it wasn't related to that. And... Um, and so that was the that was kind of like the impression that I got is it feels like lore has just kind of been thrown in there. It hasn't it doesn't feel like it was integrated very deeply into like designs 
related to the game. Like I know um, a couple things in Rift and a few things in WoW where the actual, like some of the actual layout of the world or some of like the bodies that you run into, you know, Mankirk's wife right, is right. an example that I think of where it felt, it felt like tragic. And it, especially if you'd run into that hut before you went and grabbed the quest, you were like, yeah. uh oh, that's There's terrible. nothing so far that's going to make you remember or let anything sink in or that's going to be like a that man that's a that's a new world quest you know it's not there's nothing there's no there's nothing that's sunk in yet and i don't think it's for lack of like slowing down and smelling the roses i i think that both you and i have probably taken the time to kind of read a little bit of what they're asking us to do and it doesn't seem like there's any kind of iconic um or even like pop culture nods you know what i mean mm -hmm. um to the quest design so far um so yeah i mean i you, you you have some interesting notes here. I'm just reading them as I'm talking to you. Um, oh yeah! At some point, I stopped. <laughs> at some point, I began to just write as if I was talking directly to the game designers. Yes. And yeah. So, yeah. You just have to. You just have to walk with it. Don't even worry about it. But no, yeah, it was. <laughs> I, uh, so I mean, just to just to kind of encapsulate this this kind of lack of depth, it very much feels like they knew what their motivation was. The the purpose is this kind of exploration colonization. I'm gonna keep using that word because I think that initially was their their idea until they hit the brakes a little mm -hmm. bit. Or this is kind of like um, competition for resources, new, new, you know, obviously new world, and then and then there's a bad guy, and mm -hmm. I think that the gist of the story is figuring out how big and bad is the bad guy, and that's kind of what I've gotten so far. And I think that the the work, so to speak, quote unquote, the work that needed to be done to flesh this out was like you said maybe an afterthought or tacked on at the end here um to, to, to some of those complaints you mentioned um before so um what do you what do you think about just the the general um lore of the world as you walk around and you interact with objects i know you know you've got something in here about interacting with certain types of creatures um what do you what do you like about that kind of flavor there are there are a few things that I, I that I do enjoy that I think are pretty neat. Um, I think there was one mob that was a named like one of the one of the cooler things I thought was there was one mob that was like a named mob uh, that was part of like a quest or some kind of faction quest, and the mob was located like on the top floor in the bedroom, and it was the like name of the farm was the same as like the yeah, last yeah, name I of the that lady, too. you know what I'm saying? That's the one that I remember the most because it actually felt like, oh, okay, this was her farm in the letter. It's a letter that like her husband wrote to her yeah. that he was going off somewhere. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm actually interested. This is cool. The letter that I found in the house is directly related to like the mob that I've just killed, just killed this woman, is directly related to the farm name that I'm standing in. And that all kind of wove together in a way that, okay, now I'm interested. I'm interested to read this now. And whereas for almost every other thing that went on, that kind of woven storyline was not happening. It felt more like a lot of the quest, a lot of the story was just kind of laid on top of a pre-built world instead of like being woven into it. It just felt like there was not a lot of depth in a lot of stuff that we were doing. And um, it, but that was a standout. And admittedly, um, I I haven't. You know, I, I mentioned earlier, kind of slowing down and kind of letting that stuff sink in. I that is something I'm going to purposefully do as I you know on launch and kind of slow down and not rush into the top and not going very fast. Um, I I'm I notice things like that, the named mobs in particular locations and, and homes. But you know, we've been to Mo's farm. I want to know what I want to know who Mo was. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it's something that I, I missed. You know, I've, I've seen notes, I've seen named mobs, but then to make sure that you're slowing down enough to notice like, oh, like there's a purpose here. Like it's a, there, there was a story behind this. Um, even if you're, you weren't a part of the, the way the story played out, you can see that they've taken some time to like, this is the why behind the way it is now, um, which I think is, is important. So. Um, I didn't really have much else to say about the the quest or the story or the lore. I think it's still, um, to be quite honest with you, being developed um, or, or, mm -hmm. or at least at a macro level. 
Um, I do wish that some of the side quest stuff was a little bit more fleshed out. There's not a lot of quest variety in terms of mechanics, like an escort quest, for example. Um, though I don't know how you would do that in a game like New World, where everything's kind of overworld and there's no instance content for the most part um, that takes you away from the questing environment. So UI, um, I, I like the clean look. I love that. Um, I love the menus for the most part. I like their the character sheet. Um, although I wish that it didn't take you out of the game. I wish it was a floating um, UI element as mm. opposed to an mm -hmm. overlay. Um, but and then and so I, I like all the ui choices i think that they the visually they took some time to really flesh that out and make it look uniform but let's talk about this uh chat function and, and uh, you can give your your general opinion on the ui as a whole but i hate the fucking chat system in this game i hate the font that they chose i think it looks very elementary and i think that it is very there's a lot of clutter with the color and this, the amount of chat. I know you can disable different um, channels, which I appreciate. Um, I just, for, for whatever reason, I, I hate this chat system. And I don't know what it is. I just don't. I don't like it at all. Yeah, there was, first off, a fantastic point to say that when it comes to, like, opening your bag up, opening your character up, all those screens, compounded with the fact that there is no on-screen visual indication that you've entered combat... That's a fucking problem. You know, and you know, you know, you're gonna have that experience where you're in your bags and somebody kills you. You know, it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an issue that someone needs to fix. Absolutely agree. And this is kind of like continues with some of the UI stuff related to the chat. the The impression that I had, the word that stuck in my head when I opened that chat for the first time, was, "Wow, this is over designed." And yeah. yeah. And I think it has, as I've used it more, it has proven itself that like, yeah, this is a lot. And part of what I found to be, I had the impression that this is going to be really irritating and difficult is the fact that it is so over-designed, our ability personally to like alter different elements of it is really decreased. And the ability I would think for like modifications and like add-ons in the future is also really decreased because so much of that is like integrated in on like what feels like a coded level that I don't know how you would be able to like pull apart different elements to move things around. And that's that's maybe my biggest concern about the UI is that it is over designed. And even though it looks nice and I'm glad that it's pretty clean ultimately, there, there seems to be no ability to customize it on like a bigger scale, and yeah, I think it seems that like it's very much it. welded to the same skeleton. Yeah, right? everything's kind of attached, and and I haven't tested this part. I mentioned the part about character screen and talent screen and, and all that, but when you go into the chat, does it does it take you out of the game, or can you can you be on auto run and and chat? I haven't I tested that. Think I think you can. It doesn't take you out on the screen. However, I think to enter into that like overall menu, you have to hit enter. Yeah. I think. And then to talk, you have to hit enter again. And then if you want to like exit the screen, you have to get hit enter again to clear the like chat, the little, you know, cursor at the bottom. Right, right. And then you have to hit escape to escape out of it. It's, it's just not very user friendly. Yeah. No, it is extremely clunky. And God forbid you accidentally enter into that screen in the middle of like yeah, exactly. combat or someone comes up on you. There's like 12 buttons you need to hit in order to exit out of that screen. And it is not conducive in a high stress situation. And it is just a mess. And it sucks, you know, when someone's linking something in chat, when you're wanting to reply back to someone, it's just the entire chat situation is feels like they have got like miles to go before they sleep on correcting um, some of the, the user friendliness of the chat function. And, and, you know, I, um, I'm glad we agree on the, on the chat. It, it needs work. It needs to be, I think I, they just need to simplify it. You're like, it's over-designed, right? Like you said, mm -hmm. I, I just want to be able to chat in party. I want to be able to chat with the people right around me, put a guild chat in there. I've, I've already mentioned to you before that like I, I get the idea behind help channels. I just think 
why can't that just be in global? Like somebody's gonna ask a question, why wouldn't they want everybody or the most eyes to see it? Why do we need to why do we need to segregate that channel? Um, so that's just that's just a, a gripe I have. But you have some additional elements to the UI or and, and just the game in general that you'd like to see added. And I do agree with you. Um, I can't believe that they don't have weapon loadouts or um, or wardrobe or um, what do they call them um, item builds, right? Um, in your character sheet, and I and I'm gonna jump the gun here. There, I I think that's gonna be a store item. I do. I, I know, know other games that do it. I, I know. know Guild Wars does it, and they make some money off of it. I'm not saying it's gonna be twenty bucks per one, but I think it's something they're gonna charge for. I know. I really think it sucks, though. Obviously, I think, uh, like I can understand uh, something that I found was that Rift felt like maybe a good example. But again, Rift was free. You know, Rift is free to play. So the fact that Rift, a free to play game, has a store, which I guess this one is kind of technically free to play, right? They're they're gonna not have like a monthly thing, but I, I just I feel like what's gonna happen, unfortunately, is like you said, a lot of these things are gonna move into the store. And additionally, a lot of functionality is gonna also come around with like a monthly thing. And so it's going to be a situation where you've paid for the game, you're paying a monthly subscription fee, and you're basically now paying for like all of the expansion packs like you do with WoW. But then you're also going to need to pay for basically it, what should be integrated elements of the game too. Um, like it's just a game like that was built 10, 20 years ago that you would just normally, it would be part of the game's design as a part, as opposed to like the marketing department figuring out which um coding elements we can monetize you know mm -hmm, exactly but you know and you I know that irritating yeah you know what's not free though nightly um and i don't think that you thought about this in your criticisms rocket fuel is not cheap and oh, man. Yeah, no, no one's right. gonna get to mars right and, you know giving away so many freebies uh, yeah, you know, we gotta you keep want, putting millionaires in space. Yeah, you want all this and customization for your character? You want a body slider? That's not gonna come mm -hmm. cheap. We have to hire somebody. You know, they need to put food on the table. You're I, maybe it sounds it sounds like you want people to work for free. Um, yeah, no, well, it sounds like I maybe want people to work for living wages, and I'm yes. not also <laughs> taking into the fact that all of this wage theft also needs to go to pay yeah. for rocket fuel. No, and so I'm glad all of us have to suffer together, and that's what I keep forgetting, is that yes. really the suffering of the masses is what's paying for the rocket fuel for those billionaires. And, you know, that's just, that's how a correct society in the future looks. And, and you and you know, you know, you joked about me asking you to add things to this list, but we could have easily had a section about <laughs> um, the revolution that needs to happen in the workplace. But, you, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you took the time to weave that into our conversation about the UI elements that are missing mm -hmm. from the New World MMO that Jeff Bezos is personally funding out of his own pocket. How ungrateful do you have to be as a consumer to not wow. see that he's providing us with a with a product? Like, just edge these things in here, you know, seamlessly into the conversation <laughs> so people don't even realize that's what you're talking about. They think you're talking about UI? No. We're talking yeah. about the worker, the working revolution. Yeah, it's the, the, it's the subversiveness that I, that I can't get on board with. Um, so, so the and the last UI element that I that you included here and that I can agree with you is going to be it can be a problem, and especially if you're a completionist. I love that they allow you to track various resources. I think it's cool that not only do they allow you to track like nodes and and um, fishing spots or whatever. Uh, in the UI like many other games do, but they allow you, since they have the survivalist skill or the skinning skill, you can track um, animals as well, which I think is cool. They have this like the, the small prey versus the predators. And I think that's, that's a really cool element. Um, that brings us to the crafting and gathering discussion, which is really the, the, the last major topic we'll talk about. Some of the other ones we'll end on in terms of, like I said earlier, the accessibility and the optimization. So, um, this is my favorite part of the game. I, I, I love. I want a game where I can own a house and I can be a crafter and I can gather everything I want and I can be a min maxer. Um, not necessarily stat wise, but I just want to. I'm a completionist. I want to. I want to hoard all the items. Somebody says they need like a special crafting material that like is going to get them the stat modifier. I'm your guy. So, I um, I love the the gathering and I, I should have mentioned this earlier and I did with the visuals. 
they've just so they've got that little circle reticle but like everything looks like it's a part of the environment it doesn't look odd it doesn't look like it doesn't look like a different artist designed it and it's just kind of placed on top of the environment there was a lot of thought put into you know the hues and the the saturation that the gathering nodes have so that they you you know if you didn't know that you could gather things you wouldn't know that they were an, something you could gather which i think is cool um I'm I, I'm going to go on a tangent if I keep talking about this, but what is your opinion of the crafting and the gathering system in the game? I, I agree. I, I think the word I like is unobtrusive. Is it... Uh, Perfect word. You you're, know, just, you're better than me in every aspect. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, that's. I think you described it perfectly for, for what that is, is being able to sort of like walk up to it and have the thing appear and have everything be part of, of the world and not, you know, you know I imagine... I can think really clearly in like old games where you would have like a portion of the wall be like, well, yep, that's where I need to go for uh, yeah, yeah. for like breaking that down because it so clearly stands out among the, the rest of the environment. So I like that that the ability to craft, the ability to gather and to use these things is is very unobtrusive and that it's neat as shit that you can like hack down a tree and it, the sound of your axe just like echoes through a forest that people can hear or you can be you know pinging away at an iron mine and that's echoing off like other things i think that's right, incredible right. and uh yeah it's just it's really it's really cool i really like i think crafting is really solid they've made crafting the way that they seem to have balanced crafted items you're almost encouraged to make the crafted items which i like because it makes me feel like things that I'm gathering are useful and meaningful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm impressed. I like that. I wish that they would link banks. Yes. I have so yeah. much shit yeah. in one town bank and God help it, I'm not going to move it to a different town. And so it would just be, it would maybe be a more convenient if the banks were linked. It seems tedious to not make them linked and make you move. But other than that, um, I think it's pretty solid and I like, I don't know, I, they seem to want you to craft. I, I hate the amount of RNG that occurs for gear that's dropped. Yeah. Where it feels like the stats Stat and buffs are, shitty. Yeah. Yeah. are just totally random. And I think the only thing that makes up for that is the fact that the crafted gear is really, is really solid. And so you you talked about the RNG, and I know you've had some experience with the expeditions. That is like a crapshoot in terms of you either get a you either get a terrible item, you get a you know you may get a good item, but it's you're not guaranteed to um, get something that's normalized for the kind of player that might use it. And I know games like WoW early on, they're they're you know vanilla WoW struggled with their itemization. They, you know there wasn't really a lot of thought put into stack mm -hmm. combinations that people might actually use. And right. while I can appreciate that the, the game is designed, at least on its face, in a way where if you're somebody who didn't want to do a cookie cutter thing, you could have like, you know, a, a weapon with strength and intelligence on it or something. And you're trying to do something creative and cool. But I think that is something, like you said, with the crafting, have that be like a a choice in the crafting system but if it's a piece of gear that you're getting from a faction um a faction person or out of an expedition i think that stuff should be normalized because i think somebody's running that and they're not trying to i, I think those are you know lend themselves to being more cookie cutter um that's just an i that's just an idea i had um yeah i man i i can't say enough about how i just I, I see the possibilities in the gathering and the crafting system. And one one small thing I want to note about the, this goes back to the UI as well. I don't have to stare at a cycling bar making one and two and three of something. It just makes it all. And I can't say how like what is what is small design decision that makes things so much more convenient than in, in most other games. Absolutely. The the crafting, the the act of crafting itself is very efficient. It's very visually rewarding. The the sounds of it are very, very rewarding. They feel very gratifying. I love that it will draw from it will draw um, resources from the bank in the town. 
Right. So you don't right. have to actively have things in your bag, which is outstandingly fantastic as an option. Yes. Um, Especially with an encumbrance system. system. Especially with an encumbrance system, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. So really the, the crafting is, is a high point. I think the crafting and gathering in the game, I, I don't have a lot of like big issues with it. I like that it gives you XP for everything. It always feels meaningful. It always feels useful. There's a progression um, track. You're always going towards something, right? Mm -hmm. To unlock a, a tracking ability or you're unlocking the next node. They've they've done a lot of um you know, it's and it's everywhere in life now, right? We're like go get to get to level thirty on your on your uh your your listening app or your your meditation app on your phone and you know, you get this achievement. Mm -hmm. It's like it's everywhere in life now, but um, I appreciate the fact that they've kind of normalized it across multiple systems in the game, not just in an achievement system, but, you know, your weapon skills, you get things at different tiers and you can level up and you progress on that. And so you feel like you're always making, you're always working towards something. The same thing can be said about the crafting and the gathering system. My only gripe here, um, and I mentioned it to you um, earlier, they they did an awesome job, and I as a, I'm a geography teacher, so they took this the map and they created a resource map where you can tell by the shading on the map what, what kind of resources you're going to find. And they added this fishing system last year, which I I'm amazing. Like I want to fish; it's great. Why didn't you do that with the fishing nodes? Like you tell me that this is a broad hot spot, fishing hot spot, whatever you want to call it. You don't tell me what kind of fish you're found here. Yes. Why, why would I? Why would I want in a in a in a system that already requires me to be active and like do this tension mechanic? Why do I want to guess at what I'm going to get after spending 30 seconds to catch a fish? Like it just kind of sucks. I agree. I think it's very obvious in the game the the elements that have been there the longest and the elements that are yeah, new. you're right, you're right. And the elements that are new feel dis distinctly unrefined compared to the other ones and at, at to a to a degree where it feels um concerning that it's gotten this late in the game to have some of these elements be like as you know don't feel integrated in don't feel developed um just really needed a lot more play testing on them and it's it's a lot like it feels that way with healing it feels that way kind of with some of the expeditions it even feels that way with some of the like higher end PvP combat type stuff. And it definitely feels that way with fishing. <laughs> so I know you have something on here, and I mentioned the tension mechanic as well. I envision a perfect system that is a that is a simple fix for them. Take that tension mechanic and just put it on that first click. Like make me click once if I need to hold it down. Like there there's there's something to be said about making me do an extra click in a system where again i'm only catching one thing mm -hmm. right so right. that thing that the mechanic is you have to click right you have to catch the fish and then you have to reel it in let me let me click once catch the fish on time and reel it in based on i mean you you give me i have a fishing level already so there's a proficiency and you give me different types of fishing poles there's already that kind of mechanic statically built into your system i don't i really don't want to wrestle with a fish because why do i want to catch something every 30 seconds like make it a make it a five to ten second thing it i i it is i understand it's a it's a mechanic for people who do like a more passive way to play the game i get it um or at least kind of kill time but as somebody who wants i want to use that system because i like they have so many scenic vistas and like the we talk about the ambience and the environment so much like I would love to just go out there and do that, that, that part of the game, but, um, you know, just, man, I, why, why the extra click? So make something that could be pretty satisfying and enjoyable in some respects. So, um, I didn't really have much else to say about the crafting and gathering. I could, I could spend a whole, we can do a whole video on it. And I, but I, to be honest, I haven't really gotten into the mid game yet. So I can only speak on, on it, um, in a limited fashion. So, um, we can move on to, Accessibility. You have some notes on this. I have some notes on this. Um, we'll, talk, we'll we'll kind of wrap up and put um, optimization in here as well, and we'll we'll cap the video off with some of the miscellaneous points we maybe missed before. Um, so, accessibility. Key, the default keybinds are kind of weird. I gotta say, they're kind of weird. Um, and I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you run with that. 
They are. They are super weird. I have remapped almost all of them. Uh, none of them worked for me. And um, I will, I'll give them credit that it does let you remap the vast majority of the keybinds, which is a point in its favor. Yeah. Yeah. It let me remap them to my mouse buttons, which is a point in its favor. Some of the older games don't, it's a whole fucking thing to try to get that to work. So I'm glad that that has worked. It let me map modifiers to my mouse uh, buttons. And these are the extra mouse buttons, not left and right. Um, right, which is good. Some games, you know, you can map. I've got the 12 button game mouse. So some buttons will, games will let you map the 12 buttons, oh, yeah, 12 but they won't let you map a modifier. And it's a pain in the ass. So kudos for that. The The only thing that it, uh, there's a couple things that it doesn't for some reason have keybinds for, like, you know, uh, targeting a, a party member. Yeah, those were empty. Are. I was surprised at that. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I've I keep opening the menu because I've I've convinced <laughs> myself that I've missed it. I've opened the menu to look for that like four separate times and it's still not there. But I think that's odd. And I do wish they would they would let you map maybe I understand like escape for pulling up the the main menu and closing the game out, but it would be nice if they let if they had an additional menu exit button because yes. so many things pull up these uh like you're the way that you exit out of so many things, so many like full, full screen windows is with the escape button. Right. And I don't have my hand over that way. Yeah. At all. Yeah. I'm I'm totally flip flopped, uh, with with where my I'm holding my mouse with my left hand, my right hand is basically on the arrow keys, and over by the number the uh, uh number pad, and so it's so just frustrating to constantly either be clicking the escape button with my mouse or having to actually like let go of the mouse and hit the escape button for like constantly dozens and dozens of times. So I wish they would do that. But I was impressed that they had a text size option for the entire UI. I, I, I am too. As soon as I, and when I, when I was exploring it in the menus and, I'll, and you'll see it in the footage, like I, the fact that that's default, like you said, is, is, you know, while you can't see, you can't really edit any, uh, you can't move around the UI elements. I'm just glad at least I can, you know, and my aging eyes, I can make the game, you know, readability, the readability a little bit better. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I appreciate that. I haven't messed around with too many of the other accessibility um, options, but I do appreciate the fact that games that have released in the last couple of years are making sure that they design from the ground up with a color blindness um, you know, option with the text size with um, and in not being so hard stuck on how you bind keys. And so, like you said, they do allow people that um, have different. Obviously, we all game differently. And mm -hmm. I know you and I, um, we have uh, d certain ways we like to, um, you know, use our keyboard and our mouse and things like that. And, and being able to remap things makes that a little bit easier for me. I'll admit that with such an active combat system, um, managing rolling and blocking and, and heavy attacks is sometimes um, a little bit more difficult than in speaking about the remapping. I may remap some of that to a, a, a better key press as the mouse is um, not as easy for me to uh, to navigate. But mm -hmm. um, again, there, there's just some there's some design choices that I'm I'm glad that they made uh, that try to make sure that the widest audience possible can enjoy their game so and i and i you know i don't want that to i don't think it should ever be overlooked because i think there there's obviously somebody that works for the company that had to think about what it's like to um to game differently right so yeah i was i was pretty impressed with the amount of options it did have available on default i thought they did a good job they had the text to speech too which is great um, I think the the other thing I would I wished that they would have, but I understand that this is still pretty new, is um, game pads are being developed now, and there seems to be no option for like integration with a game pad, which would be useful. And then the only other thing that I I wish they would change, and I don't think is going to be an option because this seems like something that's built into the game from the ground up, is that center locked reticle. I don't think we're getting away from it, but it can be really difficult um, to like to try to align things and move things around if you don't have 
as good sort of hand-eye control with the mouse to kind of be locked into only using that. But but I think we're stuck with that. I think that's just an element of the game that they seem to really, really like. That they yeah, I, I think inter integral is a word I would use, right? The, the, mm -hmm. um, that they've just, that's, that's, a, that's a central design choice that many other systems maybe are built around. Um, now, I know that we had a couple of more things that we wanted that we kind of mentioned it in our discussion, but um, that we wanted to mention before we, we finished the the talk here. But um, what was I going to say? It's on my screen here, but I, I can't can't find the words. Um, so the gameplay loop. I, mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that there doesn't seem to be like a lot of quest variety, but the quest, the gameplay loop is pretty simple to understand. If you're a crafter, there's things for you to do. You can gather and there's a purpose behind it. You're going to be funneling resources to people that need it for PVP or that are doing the town projects. I know we didn't talk about that at great length, but the, the upgrading the settlements and fortifying the, the forts, right? Making them defensible and adding, you know, again, we didn't, I have some UI footage of that, but um, beefing up the the weaponry that you can use to defend the settlement from being flipped. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the gameplay loop is simple to understand. I think that there's a, there's something for every type of gamer to do. I wonder though, at higher levels, how much does it change? What other layers are added? Does it become monotonous or boring? Obviously, these are things that I think game companies struggle with, even when they do have a pretty satisfying gameplay loop. Um, but we'll have to see, or, you know. Uh, We'll see kind of as we progress later on in the game when it fully releases, what is what are their plans for building on top of that? Because I think at a basic level, it's good. It's a good foundation. But I'd really like them to see them do something more complex with the systems they already have because I think that it could get stale even if you enjoy the particular type of content that, you know, you're, you're, you're playing. So. Um, what other things did you want to make sure you mentioned before we, we get to, we'll, we'll finish with the cash app stuff. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. Actually. I hadn't thought that far ahead, to be honest, that I do. I like the gameplay loop just because I feel like maybe gameplay loop being strong is maybe not the word. It's maybe simple, but it's varied. It has a lot of options, uh, which is kind of what I like. Like if I'm not in the mood to be doing a bunch of like fetch quests, I can just go out there and I can chop down trees. For like yeah, an hour, yeah. listen yep. to an audiobook and still get XP, still yes. complete. You're progressing. You know, yep. Yeah, still do stuff. So that was the part that I, I liked. Everything felt meaningful and you could really make choices on how you wanted to go out, you know, into the world and then come back in and turn things in. And you had good options for doing those things. I will say I find it the thought of whether or not stuff like that is going to get stale is really interesting. It's 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 fun now because it's new in a new environment. Yes, um, yes. But as you're saying that, I've realized that one of the things where it does seem like they have not put a lot of thought or story into is the um, the five mans, the like actual group PVE elements of it feel like that was on a back burner and that that has not been, um, yeah, you know, just hasn't been developed very well and so it is kind of curious because even with the pvp loop that is extremely repetitive and the i mean i get that you can do it's very limited uh the amount of like what we were experiencing on my server is that most of the guilds that owned the settlements when they went to war they were making choices of they were primarily selecting players within their guild to participate in the war and i think it's like 50 versus 50 so if you have a full guild it's only those guild members that get to participate in these like big yeah that's like you're, like, you're, like you're getting picked for dodgeball and you don't get picked yeah <laughs> or, or like kickball yeah. you know what i mean like you're not on the so, team this time <laughs> yeah it's kind of shitty in the same way that like in in wow early on something that really put people off was that if you didn't keep up, like if yeah. you weren't making, you know, you weren't the top level with the top gear, you weren't getting picked for the top guilds, and the only people seeing that in-game content were the top guilds. And if you missed that boat, you were just fucked because you didn't have access to that gear, you didn't have access to, you know, that guild, and those were the only, those were the people that were allowed to sort of like gatekeep everyone else. And I can imagine a situation where we're going to run into a problem 
where a lot of people who are able, it's not going to be as much of a deal. They want it to be these factions, yeah. but I don't know. I don't know how they're going to make it be a full on faction because the companies themselves are owning the towns and are going to war and are choosing the war party. Yeah. That's an interesting point. That's a really interesting point. And I, and I haven't had the, the experience with that large scale PVP yet, but I, you know, I, I, I gotta, I gotta imagine it's going to be this system and you're kind of alluding at that. Some people just may not be able, you're not in the top, you're not in the top, 10 percent you know you're you're unless you're in the in group and you're constantly communicating with your the people that are in the know or in your your company or you've got all your gatherables and you know talk about like the buffs and, and consumables and you know you're you're really good at your class or whatever i would like to see them add smaller smaller variations of a fort like system that benefits something somehow like maybe a smaller type of capture point that groups of maybe 10 can can fight over um that's just and again i'm just off the top of my head they'd have to flesh that out um send me the check in the mail but um you know i i i you know i i'm i didn't think about that until you said that and i definitely see myself as being in that camp that because i'm not i'm i'm really not trying to turbo nerd anything if mm -hmm. I wanted to experience that, I'm a I'm a spectator, not a participant. So um, I'll have to see how it plays out. It'd be interesting, though. Yeah, I can I can see where that is maybe going to be an issue. I think also the um, one side or another. I don't know if it's the attacking side or the defending side for the settlements. Get to pick the time that the war happens, oh, and the war happens in a thirty minute um, <laughs> time slot. And I remember this morning seeing a tweet from, I think it was like Swifty or something. Someone who also is a high-end um, WoW player, and I think is playing WoW Classic and streaming it, made the comment on his Twitter that they picked a time that they knew that he was going to be raiding in his like WoW guild to yeah. do the war. And so he didn't get to participate in it. And I was like... Oh shit, that's going to be a whole what a massive clusterfuck it's going to be to like not be able to choose the time that this like there's a 30 minute time slot on like a two or three day, you know, very rarely, you know, that these settlements are going to be able to flip. And if you miss it, you you have to be in the right guild, be available at the right time and be like the highest level to get to participate in them at all. It sounds, it sounds like we're gonna have to get into an oceanic guild. That's what it sounds like. We're gonna have a lot of that, Australian friends. <laughs> and that is like their main content. Yeah, Those wars, exactly. that's like the whole thing everyone's pushing. That's the whole thing and it's on Twitter. That's like the big vent that yeah. everyone is, that this whole game is about. A lot and of it is, it, yeah. It's so unbelievably gate kept and inconsistent to try yeah. to participate in it. And, I, and, and when we compare it to other games, one of the design choices from Blizzard was to expand the net for who can mm -hmm. participate in higher level rating. And I know, you know, everybody has their criticism about things like looking for raid and more and just more inclusive practices in general. Like, look, like, man, I, I when I'm talking to somebody like I paid the same amount of money you did, like I may not I may have a job and I can't do this to the extent that some people can. But it doesn't mean that my money doesn't give me access to the same things that you get access to. And just because I'm not ready at 1.30 a.m. on a Tuesday night, you know, I I think that there needs there eventually because they're going to they're going to naturally find that some people lean towards more content than others. The accessibility needs to be improved. I think that if you're not going to change the way that those 50 v 50 um, content if that the way that works mechanically then you should provide again smaller scale options for people mm -hmm. who want to enjoy pvp and i know that they have that 20 versus 20 i didn't i didn't really experience that but i know that they have that which is great that's an that you know that's something that they can obviously point to and say look if you can't make the 50 v 50 thing we do have the 20 v 20 which seems kind of similar you're, you know you're fighting over a point or you're the attacker or the defender or whatever um but mm -hmm. You know, it's a good point you make. I I I hope that they consider um, variety in the future, and um, you know, 
the reward schemes can be the same or dial down or whatever. But um, I wanted to wrap up the video, if you didn't have anything else to say, um, with one simple question. They have a mm -hmm. cash shop. What would you buy in a cash shop? What would you spend if you had some extra money? What would be something or some things you would be willing to purchase in addition to your game purchase that doesn't come with the game? You know, honestly, I think I have a lot of trouble justifying spending real life money at yes. the place that I'm at now on things that I feel I... are superfluous. Yes. So it would probably be really begrudgingly whatever fucking critical gameplay element that they've <laughs> locked behind a paywall is what I would pay for. An extra hundred pounds about. for your character for your character to carry. <laughs> yeah, I would buy it and I would make like the scrunched up angry cat face the whole time that I'm doing it. And then I would be angry about it for like a week before I could forget that it's happened. <laughs> and I can I can I can understand your your stance in principle and i felt like that for a very long time and that's why i wanted to add the qualifier in there let's say you had a slush you know you had some extra laying mm -hmm. around and what are some things that you wouldn't mind spending money on that aren't an affront to your sensibilities um that you know and you that you do see in other games because i know you play rift and they certainly have some tactics in their cash shop that I would argue mm -hmm. that their cash shop is very unwieldy. It's very obtuse. There's a lot of bloat there. Um, and I would hate to see the cash shop in New World get to that point. I think they should keep it very, they should be very clear what their direction is and what they choose to charge for. And I know that they had that article a couple of months ago where people had the uproar about what they're going to be able to build or buy or whatever. Um, but I mean, I, just to kind of start, make me kind of contribute to it a little bit. I, I would be willing to, um, you know, I don't know, buy. Man, I didn't, I didn't have this in my notes. I would be willing to be willing to buy um, a buy access to weapon loadouts. Now, I don't want to buy. I don't want to buy um, multiple weapon loadouts. Like, I don't want you to charge me per weapon loadout. But if you charged for a feature like that, or if you put it behind a ten dollar a month um, thing, I would I would purchase it. Um, now, I, alternatively, like on that same note, if you told me if I paid fifteen dollars, many parts of my game became much easier, a la Rift or other games, I would do that too, um, because I'm a I'm a mono gamer and I I really wouldn't be kind of spending my money elsewhere. Because like you, I I do have some reservations about how much I'm spending on a game um and if they had some sort of vip system that was relatively um equal to what you see in other games i would i would purchase that yeah i could see so i guess for me it would be like i wouldn't mind maybe buying like my ideal situation would be like i've paid i've paid money for this game i've, I've bought this game so I think that there should be a pretty solid, like a, a not insignificant amount of money for this game. So I think there should be a really solid, like foundational elements of the game should come with it. So I would be okay with, let's say that they add in as a default, two weapon loadout slots that you can have. You can have your main one and you can have an alternate one and you can swap between them. Yeah. And then in the cash shop, you can either maybe pay like, you know, one, um, like one set price. I don't know how, I don't care how they would do it. Or it's something that would come with like a monthly fee either way, you know, along with a lot of other things for monthly fee, but you get like three extra that, that would be okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I would be okay with stuff like that. I think having, you know, maybe having access to like an extra, um, summoning portal somewhere. So instead of oh. having only one poor thing for you know the region you maybe get an extra one somewhere i would I, and on that note just before i forget and i think i mentioned it to you earlier being able to purchase extra like a cap like a, to increase your cap of that as oh to, yeah to portal i'd be willing to you know if you told me that i'd get an extra 100 cap if i spent five bucks permanently cool i'll do it and, and it's a convenience feature and that I know that is, uh, you know, kind of account wide, I would do it now. It, I, what I don't want to see them do is do this kind of character bound stuff. I would hate that. Um, 
So there's there's a couple of things um, I don't I, that I wanted to mention before we closed out the video um, that I, I forgot to mention earlier. But you know, this game early on did have some concerns about how they depicted colonization, and I think I want to say they even had some like Native American um, depictions in the game early on. I might I, am I mistaken on that? I could have swore they did. Um, I don't know. I, I can't I, say. When you when you open up the game, they have they have a disclaimer before you click to the menu, uh, the character select menu. They have a disclaimer there that says that they work they 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 want to make sure that they depict the various aspects of what is essentially colonization um, in a in an appropriate way. And I can appreciate that. I appreciate them taking the time to do that. Um, I'm interested to see how they how this kind of narrative of resource exploitation gets carried out um because again i mentioned earlier there there's the purpose to the why they're there you know they're trying to fight over resources and then there's a bad guy but i'm not seeing much else there so i just wanted to mention that i'm, I'm interested to see um if they if they've removed that completely from the game or if some of those elements are still in the game somehow and i'm interested to see how they they depict that um but this was a, a a very enjoyable conversation. I really liked that you had way more opinions than I did because it gave me more to, it gave me more to think about. Um, and I definitely didn't have as much um, and, and as in depth of a play experience as you did. And I just appreciate you nightly taking the time to talk it out and hash it out because this is the first time I've done something like this. This is the first time I've um, done a gameplay impressions video and a, a, in a podcast format and done something where i'm getting opinions from somebody else so i i really appreciate it i want to say thank you is there anything else you wanted to add uh before we close it out no not at all i think you did great i appreciate it so much that you had questions ready to go i think that actually worked out great you had you gave me kind of a list of some of the things you were going to talk about and i was able to kind of flesh out what my like overall impressions would be i think that was that was great. I was really impressed. I think you did a really good job uh, leading up to that and uh, keeping me on topic, which can sometimes be ch challenging. So it was good. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want a? Do you want it to be in stereo or mono? Um, if you can do mono, because I'll I I don't want to have to mess with two different sound channels, <laughs> and I I, I would rather just splice out the. The stuff that Craig was not good enough to uh, to do himself. So I know we gotta stop paying Craig. Yeah, Craig, we're not pulling his weight. Fucking Craig. Fucking Craig. <laughs> All no, right. No, that sounds good. This was fun. Thank you.